Mr. Miss R and D. Well, today we're going to try and uh, reshoot this piston video that I loaded up three times, and somehow or another it got screwed up. Anyway, here we go. Uh, this is an old piston out of a uh, Buick, Pontiac, or Oldsmobile, one of the three. And we're going to talk about some of the designs here. I have some pistons here, and this one here has a slot for expansion. It has a slot here to collect oil has another slot over here. Also has a number of holes in here for oil to drain back after the ring scrape it off the cylinder wall. The pin is a rather unique pin because it has a slot in it, again, for expansion. And it's held in place with a screw. So, we don't do this anymore because it, uh, it's a problem on high revving engines. We do have uh, some other pistons here which we're gonna go into, but I wanted to show you this one here in particular because it has several things going on. It has some very wide rings, uh, has two sets of oil scraper rings, has one that's a three piece, actually four piece because there is an expander behind this. You got the two rails, the separator, and there's an expander behind. And then you have this sim simple uh, cast iron expander or oil ring here. And occasionally you'll find an expander behind that. And it wasn't uncommon to find expanded rings behind the uh, first or second ring, zero the second ring. So, this is just some of the old stuff we used to do. Now this piston here is out of a 216 Chevy, and you can see it also has a very, very wide set of uh, rings on the top for the compression ring and the scraper ring, and it has a three-piece oil ring. And this piston is actually made of cast iron, believe it or not, and it has bushings so that you could take and pin fit the bushings and put in a new pin. This one uh, actually had a clamp on the connecting rod which you screwed the bolt on the clamp and that held the piston pin in place. Now for reconditioning these pistons, which we would have to do back in the old days, we would have to cut the ring groove and then add a spacer on top of our ring. So at the time, we didn't realize it, but we were making the first gapless rings. Um, but anyway, it's what it was, and it actually worked pretty well. The alloys in the early pistons were not quite as good as what we have today. Uh, obviously, they didn't know much about uh, having a fairly durable alloy. And again, you know, aluminum was kind of in its infancy. I mean, if you look at this piston, which most of the pistons way back when were all made of cast iron, then you come to aluminum, and aluminum was a fairly new invention. All right, that's that. Uh, let's go on down the line here a little bit. This is kind of a, a next generation. Uh, thinner rings. Again, a three-piece oil ring, which is nice. Uh, what we do see in here, though, is if you see this little black portion in here, this is what we call a thermoelastic strut. And what it does, it has fingers on this side and fingers on this side over here and it actually kind of holds the piston together as it heats up uh, to stop the expansion on the thing. Well, let's say this, to slow it down. And this, of course, uses clips on the end to hold the piston pin in. Step up from that is going to this style of piston here. And uh, this is a modern piston which has fairly thin rings. Uh, this one actually has an armor guard on the top ring. On diesel engines, you'll actually find a iron insert in here that will be cast into the piston, and then your ring goes in that top groove, just to give you a little bit more strength. This is also an interesting piston because if you look down here, you see a hole, and this is what we call an oil mezzanine. And there's a hole that goes around the piston, and when you have an oil squirter on here, it squirts the oil up in that mezzanine and helps to cool the piston down. This is also an early 70's piston and this is out of a Fiat I believe. And what you see here it has a full round skirt. This is kind of what we call a slipper skirt. The slipper skirts were kind of trick stuff back in the 60's and this is actually a racing piston out of a Fiat here. That is a slipper skirt style. You see how thin this section is. And if you look at our piston on the old Buick piston, you can see that it's 
fairly narrow as well. So you don't need a whole lot of uh, skirt on the piston to be able to have it work in the cylinder. Uh, this is also a cast piston. And then we get up to forged pistons. And you can see this one here is fairly heavy duty. This is out of a big block Chevy. And uh, the crown on this, the thickness of this section up here, if I measure from here to here, is about a quarter of an inch or so. Uh, these are meant to have some serious nitrous or serious boost thrown at them. And again, it's a nice piece, but the thing about pistons with forgings is the fact that they came up with better alloys. And we've continued to get better alloys through, through the years for all of our pistons. Now this style here is the latest style, and this uses very thin rings. Also has an accumulator groove right here between the top and the second ring. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but there's also some little gas ports in here. So this is a fairly high performance piston. This is actually a NASCAR piston. And if you look, it has a whole bunch of X bracing in here, which is real nice to make it nice and strong. But if you look at the skirt, compared to this, it's quite a bit different. The pin has come down in size. It's gotten a lot shorter. So this is what we're doing nowadays on race motors. Anyway, I hope you uh, get a little bit out of this to uh, understand some of this stuff that goes on with pistons. And if you find older pistons like this that have uh, these spacers on the top or second ring, now you'll know why. John Twist Mace R&D. We'll see you soon.